fabulous monster. There, uh, this song was also one of uh, Chick's uh, children's songs. He wrote a, a series of children's songs. And I actually didn't realize until we had finished it, because I always knew it as uh, Pixie Land Rag. Mm -hmm. um, but the first time I ever heard it, I said, God, this would be so much fun to sing. Um, and it kind of evolved, you know, as music tends to do. And the original concept of doing it without a lyric and a cappella evolved into, well, it really needs a story. So I kind of wrote a story about pixies and how they like to do, a, you know, these little, these rags, you know, and, and do of like course. Dixie Land rags <laughs> and stuff like that, but only at night when the moon comes up. And it kind of, uh, there was, I started hearing carousels and stuff, and so all of a sudden instruments were kind of added, you know, that you know, that I kind of created and played, and, and that was that. But um, uh, Tim, for example, uh, there was a song called Space Circus, number one and two, which, and, and it, this thing also was very serial in its form, and Tim pulled in his son, Basehauser, Basiehauser, after Count Basie, and uh, who is a, uh, uh, producer and uh, uh, does a lot of uh, synth work and stuff like and he create he, he uh, kind of created this tapestry this track that's very ethereal and I wrote the vocal arrangement on it and it was like done in in, in stages where uh, and there was no lyrics so uh, Tim and his writing partner Van Dyke Parks who did a lot of stuff with the Beach Boys early on with Brian Wilson still works with Brian uh, they wrote this this lyric uh, um, about a circus, and so it, it you know the lyric would would uh, inspire music, and the music would inspire the lyrics, and so on and so on, and it just became this whole tapestry. Uh, what else can we talk? Armando. Armando, you talk about Armando. Janice wanted to do Armando's Roomba, which is a great, very famous piece of, of chicks. So she thought of writing a story uh, about Anna and Armando, which is Chick's parents. Funny, funny aside, not only Janice, but a lot of us thought Chick was Spanish because he writes my Spanish mm. heart, all these Spanish like influence things. Not at all. So <laughs> after uh, Janice contacted Chick and said she was writing this story, she got the inside track as to their, their story, their love story of Anna and Armando. And along with Janice's dear friend, uh, Harry Levin, they wrote an incredible story, love story, about these two people involving food and involving, I mean, it, it's just tremendous. So that, that closes the record. So we have an amazing, tapestry is a great word, an amazing tapestry of music, some of which we cannot recreate live because it's so multi-layered. And, and, but that's the fun of being in the studio. You can mm -hmm. go to other places but some of which we do live, so. Talk about Bree Samba. Bree Samba, oh, well Chick wrote this for us, actually. This opens the CD, and it's, uh, and he wrote the lyric, which is unusual. He was very excited about writing the lyric, because he usually doesn't do that. So that seems to be our, our one of our favorite songs to do live. Um, we close the show with it most of the time, and we open the record with it. It, it's just a good feel on samba, you know, and it's it's straight ahead, and it's kind of Chick's little little baby on the on the record, so he's real proud of that too. Okay. So I imagine you'll yeah. be playing that a little later tonight at your it show. It could be. Yeah. <laughs> you could close the concert with it, yeah, perhaps. That would be good. That would be good. I wanted to ask a fun question. You can take this as literally as you want. If each of the four members, you know, we're missing two, we're missing Janice and Tim, but if, if each of the four members of the group were an instrument, what instrument would they be? Oh, that's interesting. I hear that. Hmm. Aside from the obvious, somebody might sing the clarinet part or... Oh, right. Aside from the obvious part? Well, unless you want to do that, that's... Okay, obvious Have fun first. with it. Well, <laughs> um, I would say a trombone or a tenor sax that's for good. me. Yeah. I would say Tim is also a tenor sax because of the soulfulness of that. If you want to be less obvious, well, Janice, trumpet, mm -hmm. 
and I sometimes do trumpet as well. Definitely. And I do clarinet mostly, and Janice will do sax. Um, piano, we've done some vocalese with piano solos, very difficult because it's, it's a different kind of, it's a percussive instrument, and mm -hmm. the voice is more, is reedy, obviously. I would also add, like, um, an upright bass for Tim, and I would add mm. a cello for you. Because mm. yes. cello, because you have a deep, beautiful, resonant voice, how it is. Mm. And, um... Less obvious, I don't know. You know, you kind of want to stay with reed instruments because that's really mm -hmm. closest to the vocal cords. That's great. So, there you go. Thank you both very much. You're I hope you have welcome. a great show tonight, and I'm um, going to come out to watch it. Thank Should you. Be good. Thanks, Jim. Thank you very much. Take care.